lost in ideology, a really wonderful piece of work. However, I want to give it its best shot um, for the short amount of time that we have. So can you give us a brief introduction to the arguments that you're presenting here? Because some of them are kind of a hard pill to swallow. And I, I want to hear how you would elevator pitch it for us. Yeah, thank, thank you, Lauren. It's an honor to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm gratified by the invitation. Yeah, I guess it is sort of a hard pill to swallow. I mean, one way into it that's sort of easy is just to tell a little story, which is, so I once had a family member who, um, he was an English speaker and he traveled to a Spanish speaking country in the Caribbean. And he, you know, very cheerful by disposition. He was getting older in years. And every time he'd walk up to someone, he would just start speaking in English to them, even though they were Spanish speakers. And he really wanted to connect and he was doing it in a cheerful way. I sort of felt badly for him, but it, it was going nowhere. You know, the taxi driver, the waiter, the, et cetera, always just English, you know, and almost expecting an answer out of habit. And by the end of the trip, he was sort of burned out on the country and never really connected and, you know, sort of felt grumpy about the whole thing. And I actually think we're all like this uh, family member of mine, because I think in an ideological age, we all walk up to the other person and start speaking our ideological language as though it's a natural language that everyone spontaneously understands. And so at the center of the book is this idea that part of why ideological debate has become so frustrating, angry, confused, tumultuous in the United States is because people go up and start saying buzzwords to each other from their own ideological language and expect it to translate over. 